So let's continue with these drivers A to Z DSA course and the problem that we will be solving today will be involving the concepts of two pointer and sliding window. But if we're starting, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is max consecutive ones part three. So what is the problem stating? The stating that it will be given an array which contains one and zeros, nothing apart from it. And you'll be given an integer k. So your task is to return the maximum consecutive ones given that you're allowed to flip at most k zeros. You're allowed to flip at most k zeros. Let's understand. Now when I say maximum consecutive ones, can I say these three ones are consecutive? So the length is three. So I have three consecutive ones. Okay. Can I say I have four consecutive ones? Now the problem states you can flip at most of two zeros. Now assume I flip these two zeros. What will be the length? The length will be five. I have five consecutive ones now. Okay. What if I flip this and this? Then I'll have six consecutive ones. Okay. What if I flip this and this? I'll have six consecutive ones. Can I do better than six? Probably not. So you'll have to figure out what is the best way to flip at most of k zeros and then figure out the length. So the length is six. You don't need to print uh, the segment. You'll just have to print the length of the consecutive ones. Fine. So if this problem comes up in an interview, how can I approach this? Can I, can I just uh, convert this problem to finding the longest subarray with max zeros as k like with at most z uh, k zeros can i say this probably yes what is a subarray it's a consecutive portion of the array so can i say this is a consecutive portion of the array which is of length 6 and this has two zeros which is under the range so maybe I can just convert the question to finding the longest subarray with at most of k zeros. Maybe I can just rename this with at most k zeros. I can do that, right? So what will be the brute force? The brute force will be to generate all the subarrays and figure out which is the longest subarray that has at most k zeros, not beyond it, okay? How can I generate all the subarrays? I know that the first subarray is 1 itself. The next subarray is 1, 1. It, and the next subarray is triple 1. The next subarray is this one. The next subarray is this. The next one is this. The next one is this. The next one is this. So basically, I am writing down all the subarrays that has the starting value as this particular one. Correct? After that, I can start with this one. So this is a subarray. This is a subarray. This is a subarray. And this is a subarray. So I can generate all the subarrays. Now can I say one thing? When I have this subarray, the number of zeros are zero. When I have this subarray, the number of zeros are still zero. When I have this, the number of zeros are still zero. When I have this, the number of zeros are one. When I have this, the number of zeros are two. When I have this, the number of zeros are three. And I can stop over here because beyond this, if I try to generate this one, which includes this, I cannot because I already have three zeros. So I'll stop generating all the subarrays beyond this point. So the moment I get the number of zeros exceeding k, I can stop. So basically, I can only take till here, which has the starting value as this, not beyond it because I'll have one more zero and that is not required at most two zeros okay for the next again i can start here i can take i can take i can take but i cannot take beyond this i cannot take beyond this so this is the formula or this is the logic that i will be applying so what i'll do is i'll start with let's say i need the maximum length right so i'll keep a maximum length as zero and i know the starting point will be i equal to zero because that is where i'll be starting the first subarray correct with this one and then this one and then this one and then this one and so on. 
I know as I move, keeping this one as the first element, I'll have to count the number of zeros. So initially the number of zeros are one, uh, sorry, zero. And I can start the J from the I itself because if this is I, I can start J, then I can move 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 J, can move J and that will be elongating the subarray. Correct? If I'm starting I here, J will be here, then it will be here, then it will be here, then it will be here. Elongating the subarray. Understood? So what I can say is J equal to I till N. And I know one thing, if nums of or array of J is equal to equal to 0, in that scenario, I will be increasing the zeros count. Correct? One more thing, if the number of zeros is lesser than or equal to K, what is the length? The length of this subarray, all of you know. J minus I plus 1, typical subarray. If I is here, J is here, this particular length is J minus I plus 1. That's what I have written. And what I can do is, I can say, okay, max length equal to max of max length, comma, length, done. Or else, if the zeros have exceeded, I can straight away break and stop. The first for loop ends and the second for loop ends and eventually you can print the max length. What is the time complexity? I'm running a couple of loops. Somewhere near about n square, not exactly n square because the first loop is running for n. The next loop is not running for exactly n. It's somewhere near about n. So I can say that the time complexity is b go of n square and the space complexity is b go of 1 because I'm not using any external space. And this is where the interviewer will not be happy because you're taking a lot of time. And I'll ask you to optimize this. So I need to optimize my brute force, right? The brute force was taking n square. If I have to optimize it somewhere near about n, correct? It involves subarray. So what is the first uh, algorithm that comes to your brain? Two pointer and sliding window? Yes. Subarray and you'll have to figure out a complexity of around b go of n. Thereby, you should start thinking of the sliding window. Okay, how does sliding window work? Very simple. We are looking for zeros. So let's assign something like zeros which keeps a track. Initially keep it as zero. Left pointer, right pointer. Correct? That is how sliding window starts. So we have two pointers. One is the left, one is the right. So what am I saying as of now? This portion is the subarray that I'm considering. Correct? How many zeros does it have? Is it a zero? No. So it has zero zeros, which is lesser than the maximum. So can I say this is a possible subarray? I can. So thereby, probably I can take a max length as initially zero. Current length comes out to be R minus L plus 1, which is 0 minus 0 plus 1. That's 1. So max length can be updated to this. And what you can do next is, you can take this R and you can move it to the next. Again, what do you have? You're saying that this is your subarray and this is your 1. So the zeros will not be updated. What will be updated is the value of R. So 1 minus 0 plus 1, that gives you a length of 2. So max length gets updated to 2. Okay, let's move on now. So let's move R. So when I move R, I'll reach here. Again a 1. So the zeros will so the zeros will not be updated and the length will increase. So thereby the max length again increases. Again, makes sense because this is the subarray and it has zero zeros. So this is possible. Perfect. Let's move. This time I'm standing at this one. So the zeros increase. But keep in mind the zeros are still lesser than the maximum allowed. So this is possible. What is the length? The length is 4. So I can say that the max length has been updated to 4. Next time, I'll take R and I'll move it here. So this time I'm considering this particular subarray and it has a 0. So thereby, the number of zeros will increase to 2. And again, can I say that the length will be updated to 5? I can, so update the length to 5. Next time, the R moves here. Now if the R moves here, the number of zeros will increase to 3. The number of zeros will increase to 3. And thereby, I cannot consider this subarray because the maximum that I'm allowed is 
2. I cannot consider this subarray because it has 3 zeros. So, what do I need to do? Definitely, if I have this portion, I need to trim off some zeros so that the zeros get back to the maximum allowed. I need to trim off 3 to somewhere to 2 because 2 is the maximum allowed. What do I need to do? This is where sliding window comes in. Sliding window says, okay, this is the window that you were considering. Now you cannot. On your naked eye, what is the window that you can consider? This one, this one, correct? Never move the R point as of now. Try to shrink it. So thereby the L has to somehow move here. That's what you'll do. You'll be like, okay, where is L? L is here. Is that a zero? No, that's not a zero. Move L to the next. Is that a zero? No. Move L. Is that a zero? No. Move L. Is that a zero? Yes, that's a zero. Decrease the number of zeros. Decrease the number of zeros. And move well. So the moment you reach here, the moment you reach here, what do you see? You see that you have the number of zeros under control. And if that is the case, you can again update the length. What will be the length this time? That's 2. And that's not greater than max length. So you don't do anything. And you start moving R again. Perfect. So I'll move R to here. So I'll move R to the next one. It has a 1. Okay. So this is the sub array that I'm considering. 3. 3 is the length. Which is not greater. Nothing to do. Let's move R. I'll move R to here. Okay. When I move uh, my, my bad, I'll move R to the next. When I move R to here, again a 1. What is the length? 4. Number of zeros, 2. Doesn't exceed max length. So I'll move again R. So when I move R to here, what is the number of zeros? 2. What is the length that I'm considering? 5. And that's not greater than max length. So I'll not be updating it. Perfect. Let's move R again. So this time when I move R, this is the subarray that I'm considering. And the number of zeros are still 2. What is the length? 6. So I will be updating the length. Perfect. What is the next? R will be moving to 0. And this time the zeros again increase to 3. So the zeros are increasing to 3. That means I cannot consider this subarray. This subarray cannot be considered. And if it cannot be considered, what do I need to do? I need to remove zeros from the left. From the left. That is 2 pointer. Okay. Is that a 0? Yes. So the zeros will decrease. And I'll say, okay, I'll get rid of you. And if I get rid of you, I get this subarray. Which is possible. Which is possible. And if this is possible, what is the length? 6. Doesn't exceed. Let's move R. So the moment you move R, it goes beyond. So you stop then and there. And when you stop, you'll have your max length as 6. And that is your answer. So this is how the sliding window moves. You keep on moving, you keep on moving. And the moment you encounter someone, you trim it down, trim it down, trim it down. You trim from the left. That is two pointer. That is sliding window. Always start with L and R. Got it? So I'll have to write down the pseudo code now. You'll be given the list. Let's call it as nums. And you'll be given the value K. So I'll have to write down the pseudo code. How do I start? I know I need a max length. So maybe keep max length as 0. I know I need L equal to 0. I know I need R equal to 0. What do I initially do? I have L here. I have R here. Correct? So, what I do is, I start like, and you know one thing, we'll keep on going till it doesn't exceed. That's how the R moves. R keeps on moving. R keeps on moving. R keeps on moving. I know that for sure. Okay? So, initially, when the R is here, that's a 1. But I need to check. I need to check. And I need to keep a track of zeros as well. So zeros will be zero. So I'll be like, okay, if nums of R, if that is equal to equal to zero, let's increase the count of zeros. Perfect. Okay, the handwriting is super bad. So I'll be rewriting it. That's better. Slightly better. Okay, so the zeros increase. Now what is the next check? If you have increased the zeros of it being a zero, then we'll have to check. Remember this condition? I'll be showing you that condition. Wait. 
when R was here. So imagine you get this one. So the number of zeros will exceed. So remember, if the number of zeros have exceeded K in that scenario, what did you do? You, you took off L. You took off L. You kept it moving. You kept it moving. So please do it now. It'll be like, okay, if array of left is equal to equal to zero, I'll do a zero minus minus. And at the same time, I'll increase left. So any moment I get a zero, I'll trim down the zeros. And if it comes down to uh, lesser than equal to K, lesser than equal to K, I stop moving. So eventually L will be stopping over here. Because that's when you get the number of zeros to be lesser than equal to K. Perfect. So this condition will make sure that the left is always in place from the left. What is the next case? The next case is very simple. You just have a check. Hey, listen. If the zeros are lesser than or equal to K, in that scenario, please make sure that the length is, you know the length is R minus L plus 1. And at the same time, compare it with the max length, which is max of length, comma max of length, and that will be your answer. So I have the check, and that is completed. Now what I can do is, before completing the while loop, I can move the right pointer one place ahead. And then I can complete the while loop because the right point always moves to the next. And eventually, I can go ahead and return the max length and I can complete the function. Now the question is, what is the time complexity? What is driving the complexity? There's a while loop. And I'm very sure it is being driven by this capital R. Correct? This capital R. So the capital R is driving. And it is going till the last. So the R starts here and goes till here. That's for sure. So I know one thing. There's a bigo of N involved. You might be thinking, okay. Now inside this while loop, there is another while loop. But the question to you is, is the while loop always running for bigo of N type? No, it isn't. What can be the possible scenario? Sometime this L will run for this much. Then for this much, then for this much. Small, small, small. Not, not a N always, not N always. Small, small, small. Right? The worst possible scenario could be something like this. Imagine you have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and then a 0, and then a 0. So what happens is, you take L, you take R. And eventually when the R reaches here, the number of zeros are 2. And imagine K is 1. Take this case. What happens is when R reaches here, the number of zeros are 2. So the L starts here, L goes here, L goes here, L goes here, 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 here. And for this 0, it reduces this to 1 and then it goes here. So at max, it will go like B go up and overall, overall. So I can say at max, it will be B go of N plus N, which is B go of 2N. Because this L can at max travel for this index, this index, this index, this till the last. At max, it can travel for n indexes, not beyond it. And n throughout the journey, throughout the journey. So thereby, the time complexity is b go of 2n. And the space complexity is b go of 1 because I'm not using any external space. This time, the interviewer might be happy with this. A lot of interviewers will be happy with this. But again, uh, if you're going for tougher companies, they might ask you to optimize b go of 2n. They might ask you to remove this internal while loop. And this is when we will move to the like the most optimal solution. So the most optimal solution also uses a sliding window, but will be slightly smarter this time. So I'll start with L. We'll start with R at the zeroth index. I'll keep the track of zeros. And that's zero. I'll also keep the track of max length, which is initially zero. So initially I'm over here. And that's a one. So zeros will not increase. So I'll figure out the length to be 1. So the max length gets updated to 1. And then what you do is, you take the R and you move it to the next. Again, it is a 1. So zeros will not increase. And the length will be 2. So the max length gets updated to 2. Next, the R moves here. And this time it's a 1. So zeros will not be updated. And the max length gets updated. Next time, 
the R moves here. When R moves here, the zeros get updated. But but but, it is still lesser than equal to two. It is still lesser than equal to two. So what happens? The max length gets updated to four. What is what is the next time? The R moves here. When the R moves there, it's a zero. So zeros gets updated to two. The length gets updated to five because two zeros are permitted. What is the next thing? The R moves here. Now this time the zeros gets updated to three. If the zeros get updated to three, I'm saying that this particular subarray has three zeros. I need to trim off something from the left. And in the previous algorithm, we took the L entirely till here to trim off this particular zero. To trim off this particular zero, we took the L entirely to that index. But over here, we will not be doing that. So we did find a zero. Well, we will increase the count, right? And then we see a one over here. So what we will do is, we will not trim down it, and we'll just be moving the L by one place. We will just be moving the L by one place. In doing this, what we have succeeded in doing is, we knew that the max length is five, and I'm not exceeding that subarray length. It is still length five. It doesn't meet the condition, but I am not allowing it to go beyond five because when L was here, this was of a length six, and the answer could have been updated. I will not allow the answer to be updated till I till I get a zero. Under two, I'll not allow the answer. So thereby, I'm saying five is the answer, na? Okay, I'll move here and I'll still keep the answer to be five. I will not allow that answer to in increase. Okay, I'm like fine, don't allow. So let's move R. When I move R here, that's a one. So the zeros are still three. The zeros are still three, and the subarray in picture is of length six. But I will not be allowed to update because the zeros are still three. So what I'll do is, okay, this is a one, so zeros cannot be decreased. But I'll still move. Again, I'm not allowing you to go beyond five. I'm not allowing you. Okay, let's move R. So when R goes here, it's a one. The zeros are still three. I cannot update. So what I'll do is, I'll move L. I'll move L, but that was a one that was trimmed off. That was a one that was trimmed off. So the zeros. Still stay as three, so the zeros still stay as three, and this time I have five. Okay, I'm still not allowing it. Fine, let's move R. This time when I move R, where was it? Yes, this time when I move R here, I get the length as six, and it has zeros as three. Okay, L will be like length six. No, I'll move ahead. So when it moves from here to here, there's a zero. There's a zero. So this will reduce. And when this reduces, I'm like, yeah, this is possible. This is possible. The length is five, and I'll keep it as five. Perfect. Next, I'll move R. So when the R reaches here, this time the number of zeros are two, and the length is six. So I can update it to six. So I'll be updating it to six, and I'll not be moving L anymore. So what happened was. L kept on going, kept on going, kept on going, and he's like, "I'm not gonna allow you to increase your size till I get a zero and reduce myself." Interesting. Next, the R goes here. So when the R goes here, this time again, this is a zero, so the zeros will increase to three. So when the zeros increase to three, what happens is, I'm saying this subarray is not valid. So L will be like, "Okay, I'll have to shrink. I'll have to shrink." But I know I can only string by one place, so I'll string by one place, and there was a zero that was removed, so decreased. Now this subarray can be considered because the zeros are two, so the max length still stays as six. Pretty impressive, right? That's it. That will be it for this one. And uh, if I have to write down the pseudo code, it's very, very, very simple. It's the exact same code. We'll just be doing very minor changes. So function list of nums that's given to you and the k. So you take an l, you take a r, you take your zeros, and you take the max length to be zero. This time I'll be starting from r and I'll be going till the 
size. Perfect. What is the next thing that I'll do? I'll be like, okay, I'm going to tell size. First thing I'll do is, hey, listen, if nums of r is equal to equal to zero, can you do a zeros plus plus? Or you can convert this statement to something like zeros plus equal to not of nums of i. Because not means, you know, zero will be converted to one. So that's the other way of writing. You'll find a lot of people writing it. But don't write that in an interview. We usually write readable code. That's not readable. Okay. Now, what is my next step? If the zeros have exceeded, if the zeros have exceeded k, I know one thing. I'll have to take down. I'll have to take it down from L. So I'll be like, hey, listen, if nums of left is equal to equal to zero, I will be trimming down zeros minus minus. And doesn't matter if it got trimmed or not. I will be moving the left. I will be moving the left. And after this, I'll be checking, hey, listen, if the zeros are under k, then I'll find out the length, which is r minus l plus 1, and I'll update max length equal to max of max length, comma length. So after this, you can simply move the right, which is r plus plus, and you can finish off the while loop. And after that, you can return the max length, and that is done. So this is the simple version and this is how we can eliminate the while loop. It works because you're not allowing it to extend the size. The R is moving, but I'm saying, hey, I'm not going to allow you to extend your size. You still stay at size 5 or size whatever it is, the largest size. When I get a 0, then I stay constant. Then you can move. Then you can expand. So that's the algorithm behind eliminating the while loop. So time to discuss the time complexity. What will be that? So there's a while loop. So there's a definite bigo of n. Now, is there an inner while loop? Now, there is no inner while loop. So this time, if I take an example like this, where assume k is 2. So what happens is, you're keeping l here, you're keeping r here. And r moves, r moves, r moves, r moves. The number of zeros will be 1. Then R again moves, the number of zeros will increase. The R again moves, this time the number of zeros is 3, is 3, correct? So thereby, you cannot consider this. You'll have to trim down some zeros, you'll have to trim down. And this is the zero that will be trimmed, correct? But over here, in this particular algorithm, what we are doing is we are saying, the max, the max length is this much which is 6, okay? So thereby, just move L, and that's not a 0, that's not a 0, that's not a 0. So let's keep the length as 6 itself, and then please move R. And the moment R moves out, you stop, you stop. And in the previous algorithm, what you did was, you took L from here, till this portion, till you got a 0, and you reduced this to 2. You went till that. But this doesn't help because even if you're moving this L to here and then you're reducing and then you're moving the L here, the size that you get is 2, which is never going to be greater than this. So that's why the algorithm works. You can take some more examples and you can try on it yourself. Like try it yourself. Thereby, the time complexity is big of N because we are not moving L extremely to the right. What about the space complexity? That is big of 1. So that will be it for this one. So this was the pseudo code. In case you want your language specific code, you can find them below. So with this, uh, this will be it for this one. And if you're still now watching, I hope you've understood everything. And if that is the case, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, goodbye, take care.